In this video, I want to explain why I believe that the XRP Ledger will have the best AMM or automated market maker, or as our good friend David Schwartz calls it, the automated money maker. Huge shout out to David. Got my Simpsons David shirt on here today. Now, in this video, I want to run through what is an automated market maker? How does this relate to the XRP Ledger DEX? What is this adding to the XRP Ledger DEX that's already native and integrated? you know, part of the XRP ledger and what distinct characteristics are going to separate this XRP ledger AMM from the other AMMs that we have available out there and the other DEXs that are currently used for trading in our current crypto market. So I'm going to try to run through this as quickly as possible, make it succinct and easy, simple for everyone to understand. And this in full disclosure is why is, is a good part of why this with a couple other amendments and utilities that are coming on. Uh, is why I'm so bullish on XRP right now. This is the most bullish I've ever been, full disclosure. So with that being said, let's get into breaking down what is an automated market maker, and then we'll talk about the specifics of the XRPL DEX AMM. So getting started here, I got an article from Coindesk Learn explaining what an automated market maker is, and I will drop the link for this article down below so that you guys could all read into this further if you would like. But just real quickly, let's run through it. Unlike centralized exchanges, DEXs look to eradicate all intermediate processes involved in crypto trading. They do not support order matching systems or custodial infrastructures where the exchange holds all the wallet private keys. As such, DEXs promote autonomy such that users can initiate trades directly from non-custodial wallets, wallets where the individual controls the private key. Now we love this, don't we? Also, DEXs replace order matching systems and order books with autonomous protocols called AMMs. So understand that right now the XRP ledger has a DEX built into it. This is where you can trade XRP for any other issued asset on the XRP ledger. Um, and there's thousands of tokens now that have been issued on the XRP ledger. There's going to be many more. What's being added, and I call it the secret sauce that's being added to the DEX, is this AMM which is an order book with autonomous protocols, right? This is uh, order matching done so uh, through, through order books with autonomous protocols. Let's continue on here. These protocols use smart contracts, self-executing computer programs to define the price of digital assets and provide liquidity. Here, the protocol pools liquidity into smart contracts. In essence, users are not technically trading against counterparties. Instead, they are trading against the liquidity locked inside smart contracts. These smart contracts are often called liquidity pools. So in, in a sense, this is going to add a, a, a version of smart contracts to the XRP ledger, right? Notably, only high net worth individuals or companies can assume the role of a liquidity provider in traditional exchanges. As for AMMs, any entity can become liquidity providers as long as it meets the requirements hard-coded into the smart contract. Examples of AMMs include Uniswap, Balancer, and Curve. Uniswap uh, in 2018 was the first DEX to include an AMM successfully, right? And obviously that's a very popular layer two on Ethereum that allows you to trade all of the crap that is built out <laughs> over there on uh, Ethereum and the token factory. How do automated market makers work? There are two important things to know first about AMMs. Trading pairs you would normally find on centralized exchange exist as individual liquidity pools. That's a term that you're gonna hear often, liquidity pools, right? Which would typically be a trading pair. Think of Bitcoin for US dollars, Bitcoin for USDT, in this instance, on a DEX, we're calling this a liquidity pool in AMMs. For example, if you wanted to trade Ether for Tether, you would need to find a ETH USDT liquidity pool. Instead of dedicated market makers, anyone can provide liquidity to these pools by depositing both assets represented in the pool. For example, if you wanted to become a liquidity provider for an ETH USDT pool, you need to deposit a certain predetermined ratio of ETH and USDT. Now, this is one of the perks of the XRP ledger is that we have single sided liquidity pools. So if you don't want to provide USDT, you could just provide ETH to the liquidity pool, right? Um, if you don't want to provide um, Bitcoin to the liquidity pool, but you just want to provide XRP, you can do that. This will allow for single sided, um, you know, you know, engagement into these liquidity pools, which is something that, it, you know, these other AMMs don't have. 
to make sure the ratio of assets and liquidity pools remains as balanced as possible and to eliminate discrepancies in the pricing of pooled assets, AMMs use preset mathematical equations. For example, Uniswap and many other DeFi exchange protocols use a simple XYK equation to set the mathematical relationship between the particular assets held in the liquidity pools. I'll zoom in there a little bit so you guys can read this with me. Here, X represents the value of asset A, Y denotes the value of asset B, while K is a constant. In essence, the liquidity pools of Uniswap maintain a state whereby the multiplication of the price of asset A and the price of B always equals the same number. To understand how this works, let us use an ETH USDT liquidity pool as a case study. When ETH is purchased by traders, they add USDT to the pool and remove ETH from it. This causes the amount of ETH in the pool to fall, which in turn causes the price of ETH to increase in order to fulfill the balancing effect of XY equals K, right? X times Y equals K. In contrast, where more USDT has been added to the pool, the price of USDT decreases. When USDT is purchased, the reverse is the case. The price of ETH falls in the pool while the price of USDT rises. And there's the equation right there for you. Quantity of B tokens in pool, quantity of A tokens in pool, and it balances itself out, okay? When large orders are placed in AMMs and a sizable amount of a token is removed or added to a pool, it can cause notable discrepancies to appear between the asset prices in the pool and its market price, the price it's trading at across multiple exchanges. So this is where you would find, you know, and you see this on exchanges all the time where uh, price of Bitcoin or XRP or any other crypto can vary between the exchanges, right? For example, the market price of ETH might be 3000 in one pool, and in another, it's 2850 because someone added a lot of ETH to a pool in order to remove another token. This means the ETH would be trading at a discount in the pool, creating an arbitrage opportunity. Arbitrage trading is the strategy of finding differences between the price of an asset on multiple exchanges, buying it on the platform where it's slightly cheaper, and selling it on the platform where it's slightly higher. For AMMs, Arbitrage traders are financially incentivized to find assets that are trading at discounts in liquidity pools and buy them up until the assets price returns in line with the market price. And so basically the arbitrage traders are what restore balance uh, to the market price or, or the price that's being traded within that liquidity pool so that it then matches the market price on the other exchanges. Okay. Um, now, the role of liquidity providers in the AMMs, okay? As discussed earlier, AMMs require liquidity to function properly. Pools that are not adequately funded are susceptible to slippages. To mitigate slippages, AMMs encourage users to deposit digital assets in liquidity pools so that other users can trade against these funds. As an incentive, the protocol rewards liquidity providers with a fraction of the fees paid on transactions executed on the pool. In other words, if you deposit your, you know, if your deposit, represents 1% of the liquidity locked in a pool, you will receive a liquidity pool token, which represents 1% of the accrued transaction fees of that pool. When a liquidity provider wishes to exit from a pool, they redeem their liquidity pool token and receive their share of the transaction fees. In addition to this, AMMs issue governance tokens to liquidity pools as well as traders. As its name implies, a governance token allows the holder to have voting rights on issues relating to the governments and development of the AMM protocol. Now, finally, what is impermanent loss? One of the risks associated with liquidity pools is impermanent loss. And this is what pe folks need to understand. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is not a bulletproof method of making money. Okay. Uh, there's going to be a lot of folks that actually lose money. Why? Well, because one of the risks associated with liquidity pools is impermanent loss. And this occurs when the price ratio of pooled assets fluctuates. An LP or a liquidity pool will automatically incur, or a, uh, sorry, in this instance, they're calling a liquidity provider, will automatically incur losses when the price ratio of the pooled asset deviates from the price at which he deposited funds. The higher shift, the higher the shift in price, the higher the loss incurred. Impermanent loss commonly affect pools that contain volatile digital assets, which is what all of these are. So this is why there's going to be a lot of volatility. There's going to be a lot of yield to be generated from that trading, but this is where you can get caught uh, with your losses, right? However, this loss is impermanent because there is a probability that the price ratio will revert. 
So the loss only becomes permanent when the liquidity provider withdraws the said funds before the price ratio reverts. Also note that the potential earnings from a transaction fees and liquidity provider token or liquidity pool token staking can sometimes cover such losses. So essentially, you're not going to lose until you sell, right? Or until you try to get out of that liquidity pool. So if the ratio gets out of whack and you have losses, right? These are basically paper losses until you actually go to sell and remove your funds from the AMM. Now, um, what makes this beautiful is the, the, the speed at which the XRP ledger settles is going to help find um, that price discovery. The arbitrage will be found. The arbitrage will be made. And this is where we expect healthy liquidity pools to be developed on the XRP ledger is because the speed and the ability of arbitrage traders to get the ratio back to where it needs to be, right? So if a liquidity pool does go out of whack, and it's a sustainable liquidity pair that's you know commonly traded, that's not just a dead out rug pull, then the traders, the arbitrage traders will bring that back to the the the, the ratio, the equation uh, for the, for the said assets, right? So this basically bringing it back into balance, right? So as long as you're not selling while the ratio is out of whack, you're not going to take on those losses, okay? But this is where you got to understand this is where the rug pulls are created because you have basically honey pots where all this new liquidity comes in, but then you have big whales that are pulling liquidity out and nobody's you know, fulfilling that liquidity. Nobody's coming back in. You could have arbitrage traders coming in and trying to solve it, but because you have so much sell side volume, i.e. rug pull, that's what causes the coin to just continue to fall and it's a death spiral. This is what we have to watch out for. And this is where you have to understand the issuer behind the tokens that are going to be paired up in that liquidity pool with XRP or whatever other currency you're going to have that pair with. So uh, what makes the XRP Ledger AMM different? Well, I found this chart. This was put out by Anados Finance on Twitter. And it talks about the XLS30D core features and how it's not just about the AMM, but it also creates a two-way interoperability between the existing CLOB, which is the Central Limit Order Book, DEX, and the AMM, and enables features that will make trading on the XRP ledger even more seamless and efficient. So this is massive, folks. This is going to be one of the biggest updates to the XRP ledger ever. So we look at a couple of these protocol native build as a core primitive of the XRP ledger. Developers can utilize AMM functionality without the need to create their own smart contracts and face associated risks. So it's basically creating automated smart contracts where we won't have to go create our own. We also get the continuous auction mechanism. The AMM continuously auctions trading advantages for 24 hour periods at near zero trading fees such that arbitragers do not have to wait for profits to exceed fees. This results in immediate arbitrage trading and maintains stable volatility. So like I said, those arbitragers are going to continuously be battling to make that money, um, and, and they have near zero trading fees, which incentivizes them to make those trades, try to get that profit, because they don't have to pay fees, you know, nearly nothing in fees to do so. This proceeds from each auction are uh, sorry, the proceeds from each auction are partially refunded to the prior arbitrage slot holder and partially burnt, effectively reducing impermanent loss. So they're going to be continuously reducing that impermanent loss. The impl Im Im impl sorry, the implementation of a continuous auction mechanism requires arbitragers to bid to capture price discrepancies. Now, this is the other one that I'd mentioned. Single-sided liquidity provision. Only a single asset is required to contribute to a pool. The protocol swaps on an LP's behalf to maintain a one-to-one -one ratio, thus decreasing the number of steps for users. So if you just want to add XRP to the pool, you can. You don't have to add XRP and ETH. You could just add XRP. You could just add ETH. You just have to add one side, single-sided liquidity provision. Many other DEXs don't have. I don't even know if there are any other AMM DEXs that have this. And then the CLOB DEX integration. The AMM is integrated with the Central Limit Order Book, based DEX, and enables price optimization to determine whether swapping within a liquidity pool through a order book or both provides the best price and executes accordingly. 
Finally, there are no minor extractable value or front running. With the mining, there's the ability for folks to front run the, th these trades. The XRP ledger uses federated consensus, meaning that each ledger equivalent to a block is determined by a consensus of participants whereby no single party can dictate which transactions or ledgers are valid. There are no miners to prioritize only certain transactions, namely higher gas fee orders to the ledger. Okay. The proposed AMMs and existing DEX order inherent the, uh, inherent the core ledgers can, uh, can not, canonical transaction ordering determined by the distributed network of validators, thus making it near impossible to front run transactions. Now, you can see here, this is bigger than just the AMM. This is adding on to the features for the DEX as well. This is what is going to make the XRP ledger the best source for liquidity in the world. You partner that up with what Ripple's doing at the higher level for institutions and banks becoming the one-stop shop. They also have the custody solutions. You can start to see where this is going to go. And oh, by the way, this is where Ripple starts to move their on-demand liquidity flows to the DEX. And they're going to ramp this up with the AMM. And they're going to be able to obviously fund a large amount of XRP into these liquidity pools. And this is a way for them to, you know, get a yield out of their XRP without having to sell it. And this is a way where they can, you know, basically provide their XRP to the DEX, to the ecosystem, was still, you know, in a healthy way. Absolutely love to see it. Now, this one was shared right here, and this is just a simple chart to understand kind of the continuous cycle that we're going to see building out liquidity on the XRP Ledger AMM. So you start out right up here up top. Liquidity attracts traders. That brings in volume. Trading volume generates fees. Fees enable higher uh, liquidity provider returns. So you're going to be getting more returns. And liquidity, pair, uh, liquidity provider returns sustain liquidity and incentivize more people to provide liquidity. And so it's this virtuous cycle, this flywheel effect that gets going. And like I said, I believe that what Ripple is going to do is they're going to partner up with their on-demand liquidity partners. Let's throw out an example like a Tranglo that's going to issue uh, Philippine Peso on the XRP ledger. And we already know that they fired up ODL over there. Tranglo using ODL in a few different jurisdictions. But I'm just giving the example of Ripple and Tranglo, right? They can provide liquidity to this trading pool, uh, to this liquidity pool that's going to allow them to generate a yield, right? They'll be able to collect fees and generate a yield for providing that liquidity. And they'll be able to provide and pass that liquidity off to their clients for the cross-border payments as well going from US dollar to peso, going from, you know, Bitcoin to Philippine peso, whatever it may be, you get the point, right? And I believe that Ripple with their XRP and the escrow, they're going to be able to fund these liquidity pools along with their on-demand liquidity partners in a way where liquidity gets added and it's not going to be taken away, right? This isn't going to be like the DeFi craze that we saw uh, in, 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 and, and remember, there are going to be, there already are scam tokens on the XRP ledger. There's going to be more. They're going to build out liquidity pools using the AMMs and they're going to commit rug pulls. So we have to watch out and I'm going to be dropping more content on how to do due diligence before you invest in these liquidity pools. Basically, how do we research the token, the, the issuer behind that token? And we're going to look at the volume, the flows so that we can track it and know when to get in, when to get out, when to stay away. So more content coming on the way. If you guys appreciate this update, please understand one final point. The Ethereum doesn't have a layer one DEX, uh, AMM, right? So Uniswap is one of the layer two solutions. There's also Curve Finance. There's a bunch of others. All of the layer twos on top of Ethereum is where the, the, the DEXs are with the AMMs. What makes XRP Ledger different here is that we're going to, we already have the DEX built in on the layer one. And this is going to be a layer one AMM as well. And without the mining, without the proof of stake, you don't have the, the, the worry and the concern of front running taking place either. And with the settlement in three to five seconds, if you want to get out of the liquidity pool or you want to get in, you can do so in three to five seconds at no cost. This is what's going to separate the XRP Ledger AMM from the rest. This is what's going to separate XRP, the native token of the XRP Ledger from the rest. And I'll leave the speculation on the price of XRP up to you guys. Don't expect this to be a 
XRP to to a hundred bucks tomorrow as soon as the AMM goes live. But I believe that this is going to be the start of a sustainable trajectory to the upward price as more people want to hold, more people want to get uh, yield, and more people are going to source liquidity from the XRP ledger. So once again, if you appreciate this update, please share this out far and wide so that everyone understands why the XRP ledger is going to have the AMM and the opportunity at hand. If you appreciate what we do here, make sure you smash the thumbs up, subscribe to that notification bell so you don't miss any of our updates, and I will see you guys in the next one. God bless you all. Thank you so much.